Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being on my channel where we are talking about the multi-dimensional approach to radically and rapidly healing and transforming during and after narcissistic abuse. And I wanna to talk to you today about why it's really important not to minimize, right, the impact that the narcissist behavior has on you. So let me explain what I mean, yeah? Part of the cycle of narcissistic abuse is the abusive behavior that is harmful to us emotionally, energetically, and eventually often physically becomes normalized, right? So we get good at having a, a high pain threshold. We get good at kind of going into denial with ourselves about how unacceptable this is to us and how harmful it is. And this isn't to be scared of it. It's just part of our healing involves like, coming out of denial right so part of what like what we call cognitive dissonance is us being able to not accept the reality that we're in right and when you actually start waking up to what's going on in narcissistic abuse it's it can be a pretty hard pill to swallow literally like quite a hard reality to accept um and acknowledge because i mean i've spoken before right i i i wouldn't even consider that my parents were abusive until I got to 30 years old, right? And they were highly abusive, but I didn't know what abuse was. And I certainly would defend and protect them completely in my emotions, in my actions, in my not being willing to, you know, accept anything other than good things said about them. I've spoken on the channel before about how when I first went to see a therapist, it was for panic attacks and, she asked me very little about my life, but she, they could tell because um, I, I was uh, still having a close relationship with my father at the time. And so she asked me not to speak to him um, during the therapy, and I absolutely refused that, right? I heard that same request um, 10 months later when I was still struggling with panic attacks from another therapist. And then I realized that I've got, there's something I've got to listen to here. None of them at the time um, identified um, what I was going through as a narcissistic um, abuse cycle. None of them used the word narcissist. It took me a lot of time longer to understand what a narcissist was. And no doctor or therapist at the time knew what I was actually suffering from, which now I know is PTSD. I tend to use PTSD rather than CPTSD because CPS, CP, C, post PTSD is still a form of PTSD, right? Post-traumatic stress disorder, which can look like confusion. It can look like depression. It can look like um, imbalance and irregulation of our emotions, extreme panic, fear. Um, anxiety is what I uh, was going through, it, all PTSD. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. It took me a long time of studying, of researching, of healing to actually come into the awareness. Now, a, a way we kind of survive is to decide that what we're going through isn't that bad. So I wanna to talk to you today about why you've gotta be true to yourself because the narcissist is constantly distorting and denying your reality and eroding your sense of self, your self-esteem, you know, your essence. So I, you know, th these are the sort of lies I would tell myself. Well, I can handle it. They don't mean it. It's not that bad, yeah? Um, I would, I would do what I'd learned in personal development that is really useful with healthy people. But with narcissists, a lot of what we learn about spirituality even and personal development works against us because we're not dealing with a soul attached human, which means that they have a very destructive nature. And when we're trying to see the best in people, which is what I did my whole life, and I'm trying to look for the good, actually it was working against me. So when we're dealing with a narcissist, we've got to know what we're dealing with, and it's, it's a different approach that we've got to take. It's not just to see the worst in people, it's to, be, it's to see the truth in people. It's to see what's real. Now, if you're being invalidated in any way in how you feel, if you're being dismissed, emotionally neglected, um, hurt, uh, ignored in what you want to need from the other person, right? If your needs aren't being met and they're not just that, but you're being in any way like almost punished <laughs> for not doing what someone wants or, you know, just not loved, supported, cared for, valued and honoured, right? 
you could be in an abusive cycle. And the thing is not to get too caught up in diagnosing the other person if that's, if that's not helping you. Because when you know what a narcissist, it will be very clear for you. The first thing to know in any relationship is that how you feel matters. It matters. And we've been taught so many of us to look at what's wrong with us rather than actually critically, objectively look at the behavior that we're receiving. And what, like, we're looking at trying to fix ourselves out of our feelings than actually knowing that it feels off a lot of the time because it is off, right? And so many of us get also stuck in the loop of trying to get the narcissist to see their errors of their ways, trying to get them to wake up. And if it's a narcissist, they will not want to do that. They will refuse to do that. They will invalidate you even more. They will um, completely distort your reality even more, right? They don't want a healthy dynamic. They don't want a relationship where you're valued. They, they want to continue to abuse you, to siphon your energy um, and it's they get a power hit from how much they affect you negatively yeah it can be a very brutal experience and a very very um challenging one because you're going to have to trust yourself and how you feel more than what's going on around you because it won't make any sense the way the narcissist um treats us doesn't make sense it's not fair it's not it's not um it's, it's just inhumane a lot of the time, right? So it's hard to develop strong self-esteem if we've been a lot in a lot of these cycles because our subconscious, the little girl or boy in us, feels like, well, if I'm treated this way, I must be wrong. I must be unworthy. And we spend a lot of our lives, a lot of the time, trying to compensate for how other people, and especially abusive people and narcissists, have treated us, right? Thinking that we're not good enough, thinking that we need to do more. And minimizing, we've got this sort of <laughs> inbuilt thing where we'll often minimize, right, the truth of what these, what is actually going on with us, right? And part of that is a survival mechanism because it, it, it's just to protect us from the trauma of having to accept that the person that's supposed to love me is actually trying to destroy me right but the reason it's important is because until we acknowledge that you know we hold a higher standard for our life and at least that's got to be to receive the love that we're willing to give right then we don't really energetically attract a higher standard for our life right until we're willing to actually acknowledge that you know this isn't actually you know this is not good treatment right this is not treatment that i should have to endure this is not the way to treat me this is something that is abusive it's not healthy and you know we get to navigate our own journey and our own timing and what we're going to do about that in terms of like our relationships but the first thing is we've got to come out of denial we've got to stop trying to fix the wrong person and actually heal ourselves we've got to set standards for our life that are authentic it's not about it's about standards i don't mean like being on an ego trip and thinking you're better than everyone else i mean being true to your heart and soul looking after yourself self-partnering and deciding like <laughs> what you will and won't accept and at the very start knowing that people that invalidate you people that trauma bond you people that don't support you people that want the worst for you people that antagonize your pain torment you um, in any way are not healthy for you right and that's not to be minimized because your life matters your emotional experience matters right and we've got to come out of denial as to what's going on and also start breaking the subconscious pattern which means like so when we feel like we're being treated wrong we think we are wrong that's where shame comes from the underlying subconscious program of i am wrong there's something wrong with me yeah and guilt comes from i did something wrong and this is guilt and shame are the emotions that the, no, the narcissist cultivates in us where we feel like i am wrong there's nothing i can do that's right um, we're to blame in some way, we should be better, we should be able to handle it, we should be able to change it, all that kind of stuff, that it's actually our fault underlying, which it is not. Narcissistic abuse has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them, everything to do with them. And the more you try hard to get them to love you, you're asking someone to love you that is incapable of love, right? And they're not gonna change their predictable sequence of behavior. So we've gotta learn how to be energetically strong um, and you know, in relationships that we can control, have standards and boundaries that are aligned with our true 
purpose, like who we really are, right? And not aligned with how much we think we can take at our own detriment, because a lot of this is like, we get used to such a level of bad treatment that we think that, <laughs> you know, that's what we have to endure. And that's, it's very difficult from there to actually attract healthy relationships. So if you want to join Sovereign, where I teach you about energetic strength and boundaries, values, standards, uh, lots and lots of things, and there's lots of like support in their Q&As and stuff, get in for uh, July 17th. Other than that, lots of love, guys. I'll speak to you soon.